Hello everybody and welcome to episode 8 of the H-Bomb and J-Rock unboxing show. I'm Henry H-Bomb Higgins and as you can see I'm on my own again as my son Josh J-Rock Higgins had a family function yesterday and can't be here today. Now taking his place as before is Joker, thank you Mr J. And today's show actually isn't going to feature any unboxing at all. What we're going to do today, to do today? To do today. What we're going to do is going to go and have a look through some of the older figures in the collection, going back through five of my favourite pieces over the course of the show, uh, some special mentions at the end because it was hard to really whittle it down to five, and you'll find out where I got them from, if I can remember, how much I paid for them, how much they're actually worth if you go online, and where you can get them yourself if you're interested. So without further ado, let's go with the first piece. Okay, now for this first one, we're actually cheating a little bit as we have three pieces, um, but they're all from the Crow and realistically, if they weren't going to be separated, you'd be looking at three of the five entries that we're going to have here and it seems unfair to clog up with the crow so they're all put in one uh, going from left to right or your right to left we have an 18 inch Eric Draven from NECA and this is actually the very first collectible I ever purchased I got it from a shop in Glasgow that no longer exists A1 Games used to get a lot of stuff from there um, but this was the first uh, huge huge fan of the Crow film I actually love the sequels a lot of people don't but I like the sequels and the TV series I have them on DVD down to my left and there's a couple of Eric Draven Crow pictures on the wall as well which you'll, you'll see at the end of the show um, I'll put some pictures of my artwork up there um, with this one it's 18 inches tall comes with a crow that will rest on him however this figure is notorious for being very hard to balance uh, and it topples over unless you get it absolutely perfect it's a motion activated with sound so we'll see if we can get some of that going now Yeah, I look stupid waving, but that's how it works. And so it has a number of phrases from the movie. And very detailed. Uh, a lot of people love Hot Toys, uh, sexual collectibles, I do too. Uh, however, they're out of the price range of a lot of people. NECA are. I hate to use the phrase a budget sideshow, but they're a lot cheaper than sideshow's figures and they look almost as good. Uh, unless you're really, really into specifics and you're looking for the most minute of details, a NECA figure will always pass. Okay. The next one is this one and I believe it is the only action figure of Top Dollar who is the main villain of the movie however in the original graphic novel which I have somewhere as well um, he's not as he's portrayed in the film but Michael Wincott fantastic actor in the role this is and um, spoilers for a over 20 year old film this is a scene from the climax of the movie where they're fighting on a church rooftop uh, Top Dollar has his sword, Eric doesn't have a weapon but he grabs a weather vane from here after he's been hit by lightning of course and uses that as a makeshift sword. It's a very intense scene and with this one uh, again this is from NECA and it's called uh, basically Rooftop Battle and this and this and the next one with a where you can get from Amazon and eBay various prices 
the most expensive version of this was £80. The most expensive version of this was £1,104.65. But you can get them a lot cheaper um, if you just have a quick look around. This is just the highest price I found. And lastly, over here, we have what's called the Crow Reflections. And it's actually a very lovely piece. It's Eric before the full makeup transformation. However, he's part way through with the trousers and the boots. Um, there's bullet hole details in the back, which again you'll see from pictures. And on this side, which is obviously the reflection in the mirror, is the crow. And in full makeup, and is to show the two sides of the character. It also comes with a decorated dresser and a little mask that comes off that is the inspiration for the makeup in the first place. And that can just hang nicely there. And that is my collection of crow figures. This you can get again is from NECA. You can get this for roughly depending on where you go, the most expensive I saw was £270. Um, but you can probably if you look around you can probably get it for between £40 and £50. Um, may not come in the box, maybe some damage, it could be a number of different things. As it relates to posability, uh, articulation isn't that great. The 18 inch one has articulation in the neck for turning the head, shoulders and elbows, uh, the wrists also turn, and articulation in the legs and the ankles. The reflections ones only have articulation in the head, wrist and shoulder area, again for posing the arms. Uh, they only really work in that one position though. And the rooftop one, this is actually just a piece that can go pretty much anywhere. And top dollar only has the articulation in the shoulders and that's pretty much it. But again, these are display pieces rather than action figures. And that is number one in the countdown of five for the crow. Now, number two on the list is this, which is Gay Ellis from a TV show called UFO, which was from a British gentleman by the name of Jerry Anderson, who also created, among other things, Thunderbirds, Captain Scarlet, and basically did wonderful things with puppets. Um, the stuff that he did, obviously the walking was quite cheesy but the effects and the actual drama he could get into a show about with just puppets was phenomenal however UFO was actually a live action TV show which was a break from the run from him and a majority of the female characters all had purple wigs it was deemed in the show to be part of the uniform so it was quite a striking image to begin with and this is a figure of one of them, who is a lady called Gay Ellis, and it also has sounds from the show. And the figure itself has articulation uh, where you would expect the head can tilt up and down, turn left and right, and the wrists can twist and bend so the articulation is basically shoulders elbows ball joints so they can go up and down and basically you can pose her pretty much any way you would wish to uh, she has knees articulation and the outfit is very accurate of the TV show and it's actually an outfit it's not just like the clothing isn't just part of the body uh, so she has silver knee-high boots, decent heels on them, uh, fabric jumpsuit, belt, uh, the little stand here obviously helps her to stand and it's a very accurate representation of the character on the show. 
Um, now the outfit can come off, but I don't believe they ever released any alternate outfits for the character, so there's no real reason to do so. This I got from a jumbo sale, which is like a car book sale, but for cars, for £75 in the box. Now, going online, these can go for up to $400 in the box. So that was a hell of a bargain. And this is another one of these figures, which is... It's unique to the time period that the show came out. And I just like it. I just think it's a very striking piece. So, on to the next one. And number three on the list is this Battle Damaged Robocop, which is from McFarlane Toys. Uh, McFarlane Toys, uh, most famous for Spawn, as uh, Todd McFarlane's designs for the most part. Uh, they're really, really, really good figures. Um, they do a lot of unique figures as well, which are interesting to say the least. Um, with this one, it's obviously taken from the original Robocop movie. It's a battle damaged version. Um, as you can see, uh, the visor has some damage down there. Uh, the body's beaten up. And the figure itself is highly accurate. Our articulation, uh, where you would expect shoulders, wrists, elbows, head. Uh, can go up and down, the neck turns, uh, hips, knees, ankles. And one of the fantastic things about this one is because it's a robot, the joints can be obvious. Because with a lot of action figures, um, especially ones where there's bare flash for the limbs, being able to see the joints can take you out of the reality that you're trying to create, especially when you're making dioramas and such like. With something like an Iron Man, a Terminator, or in this case the Robocop, having it be a robot in the first place, that's fine. Um, one of the great features of this is the ankle joints are actually on pistons. You can see there, which is a very, very beautiful detail. Um, with this one, the gun does not holster. Um, it's permanently in his hand. Uh, again, you can get more expensive ones specifically from Hot Toys, who will allow you to do that if that's what you're looking to do. With this one, again, similar to the previous figure, I got this from a car boot sale. A different one to the one from UFO. And I got this for £2. Now, it retails, you can get it online at the moment for £185. Um, that's the highest price I found for one and this is a wonderful piece if you see it obviously as I say it's very movie accurate one of the great details if I can get that close is through the battle damage visor you can actually see his eye if that is invisible through the camera I'm using now there will be a actual close-up photo later on in the video and yes, this is another magnificent piece. Number four on the list is this little beauty from NECA. Uh, Halloween, Michael Myers and Dr. Loomis. The set is... This isn't the full diorama, unfortunately during a house move some of the pieces of the diorama got lost and somehow Dr. Loomis's right arm also got lost. Uh, however, I've made it work by saying Michael Myers cut his arm off. It's as good a reason as any. Um, this set now comes actually with three pieces that come together here at the front which would make like a front lawn where Dr. Loomis can stand 
point a gun which was in his right hand which he doesn't have anymore to Michael and it also comes with this neat little pumpkin which lights up as you can see there it lights up and it's a beautiful little touch with a lot of these dioramas it's the little details that make them stand out the Michael Myers figure itself sits in the stand at the front here Dr Loomis can stand there as well and he has his trademark butcher's knife articulation in the head so his head can go up and down around the neck uh, left and right he has shoulder movement only up and down the wrists can turn so you can pose this any number of ways um, he also has his elbows don't bend but you can twist them round same on his other hand as well uh, the mask is beautifully detailed you can't remove the mask but if you look closely you can see eyes behind the mask which is a nice little touch uh, Michael Myers obviously a very very iconic figure in the world of horror uh, John Carpenter did a wonderful job uh, realizing that vision back in 1978 on virtually no budget whatsoever this I had bought for me as a present uh, from Amazon uh, at the moment if you go online these figures are worth as high as 380 pounds and that would be for the full set obviously this is a battle damage set so this would be worth a lot less at the moment but it's still very near and dear to my heart as it was the first horror collectible that I ever purchased and this is a wonderful piece um, even though it's battle damaged um, it still has a strong place in my heart as it was the first horror piece that I ever got um, I've had acquired quite a number of horror items since then however this was the first one and it so holds a special place and like the movie itself it's timeless and number five on the list is this which is Nightmare on Elm Street, uh, Freddy Krueger, Wes Craven's New Nightmare, a vastly underrated horror film. Uh, Scream Before Scream existed. Uh, a lot of people believe it was Wes Craven's dry run, trying out the meta before Scream uh, came around. If you haven't seen the film, it's basically Freddy Krueger in the real world. And it has a wonderful job of having the actors from the earlier Nightmare on Elm Street films specifically John Saxon and Heather Langenkamp playing themselves as well as falling into their recurring roles as Nancy and Nancy's dad um, Robert England is also in the movie as himself as is Wes Craven and a number of new line executives and the basic premise is that the dream demons who were seen in Freddy's Dead the final nightmare were actually a very ancient demon and how this demon is contained is by telling stories and through the ages the demon has been contained through numerous horror stories and when Wes Craven created the first Nightmare on Elm Street the demon was contained in that tale however after Freddy's dead and they stopped making the movies the demon was no longer being contained but it liked being Freddy so Wes Craven is tasked with writing a new movie New Nightmare to contain the demon once again and what's wonderful about the Freddy Krueger figure is it goes back to 
being more directly influenced by Wes Craven's original vision for the character. Um, the bone claw glove, as you can see here, is actually based on the design that was on the original Nightmare on Elm Street poster. The fifth blade on the thumb here adds a little extra menace. Kruger himself is much, much darker in the movie. Um, again, they felt that after the first one, where he was jokey, but really, really sinister with it, obviously he became the hero of his own movies, which happens a lot with slasher films because the only recurring character is the slasher if they have sequels, so that's who you're going to root for and it's more of a can they top the deaths they did in the previous films especially with Freddy Krueger because he was in the dream world the deaths could be super elaborate so they had to basically come with, up with ways to outdo what they did before Wes Craven with the new nightmare stripped that back and just made Freddy Krueger a force of demonic nature once again the figure itself has a little diorama which is from the end of the movie which has a pillar a uh, little base with some snakes a version of the script which is featured in the movie uh, the long coat and the hat which can be removed he also comes with a more demonic freddy head as well the figure is Again, the colour scheme is a little darker than what the films became, and it's a really, really menacing piece. Uh, the only Freddy Krueger that I own at the moment, uh, however I am looking to expand on that, um, Krueger comes with a number of great dioramas that you can find online. With this one in particular, the figure cost me £40 from Amazon. However, you can find it online now if you have a look for roughly £45 is the most expensive that I saw. Um, you can get it cheaper, as mentioned earlier. Um, you can get them a good deal cheaper if you put the time to have a look around. Go online, find out what you can. Um, this is a wonderful piece from a forgotten film. A film that deserves much more credit for what it did with the horror genre, with the slasher genre, what I did for Freddy Krueger. Um, if you haven't seen it, please do so. Um, if you have seen it, watch it again. And lastly, here we are with the special mentions. Uh, what we've got here, we've got Sideshow Bob, talking figure, uh, Sideshow Bob, my favourite non-Simpsons Simpsons character, perfectly played by Kelsey Grammer. Uh, it's a good sized figure. Uh, haven't opened this one, probably won't open this one. Uh, we have here, which is from the Eagle Moss collections, you buy like a comic or a magazine every month and you get a figure with it. I have quite a number of them uh, still in the boxes. These two however, Dark Side and uh, Doomsday from the Death of Superman. Now I'm a huge Dark Side fan as you can see from the tattoo here. Uh, Superman symbol with Dark Side Omega surrounding it. Uh, Dark Side is just a fantastic villain. Uh, Rumours are he may feature in some capacity in the upcoming Justice League movie uh, but Steppenwolf is the main villain of that film. He's like the understudy to, not the understudy, uh, second in command to Darkseid. So he's like a herald of Darkseid. So he's coming to Earth for the mother boxes that were featured in Batman v Superman, shown very briefly. and. He's coming to lay the foundation for Darkseid to appear. Uh, Doomsday, no introduction, the man who killed Superman, albeit temporarily. And the shot here is obviously of him holding the tattered cape of his fallen foe. Uh, move 
moving on from there, we have Grave Digger from Spawn. Uh, wonderful, wonderfully detailed piece. And I love the little tiny diorama, but it gives so much character and detail to the figure. Uh, sticking with Spawn, we have the man himself, uh, resplendent with a hook and chain cape. Uh, Spawn has had so many looks over the years, and word has it that uh, after what I enjoyed, I enjoyed the movie with Michael J. White. Um, a lot of people didn't. Uh, then there was a wonderful R-rated uh, animated version. But word is Todd McFarlane is in production of a new live action version, which again is going to go for an R rating, which the character really needs. Uh, some go for an R rating just because it's the cool thing to do, but with Spawn, I believe it justifies for the character, much like Deadpool did. And this is a lovely detailed piece, some decent articulation, nothing too groundbreaking. But again, with something like this, this is more of a posing piece uh, display than like an action figure. And here we have Camille Noir from Clive Barker's Tortured Soul series. Uh, this was series two. Uh, this figure was first released in 2002. And again, like Spawn and Grave Digger came through McFarlane Toys. At the moment, uh, I paid £30 for this figure. It's very reminiscent of what would be considered a Hellraiser style piece. Um, but it is an original Clive Barker creation, so obviously the Hellraiser influence was there. Um, Wings of Flesh saw blade through the skull but the brain still being there uh, this is another lovely detailed piece very SM orientated which a lot of the tortured soul series was and a lot of Clive Barker stuff is in general and with this figure uh, you can buy it online with this figure you can buy it online. Uh, generally speaking, uh, you would have to go to eBay. Prices range between £40 and £200, depending on who you're buying from. So obviously you want to go for the cheapest one possible. And it is just a wonderful dark figure. Uh, as you can see from what I've displayed here in the collection, uh, horror is a big influence and the last honourable mention is one of the more recent figures again this is from NECA and it's Jason Voorhees from Friday the 13th part 6 and it comes with the mask which is removable as you can see from the box numerous weapons including the pole which was used to resurrect him in the movie uh, a uh, serrated knife, different hand for different things, and his machete, because of course Jason has to have a machete. Now, uh, for many people, this was the best of the Friday the 13th movies. I'm a huge Friday the 13th fan. Um, I think it's a great movie. I prefer Freddy vs. Jason just for. I think just for the crossover factor, I enjoyed the remake, which obviously combined four movies. Um, part one, at the time, would have been great, but I think because I'd seen part three first, going back to one and two is a bit of a disappointment, just because it, first one obviously isn't Jason at all, the second one isn't Jason as we know, and with hindsight being what it was, that's not what I was into then. Um, but Friday the 13th Part 6 is the first one where he was really the undead unstoppable monster. Um, part 7 was basically Jason versus Carrie. 
for lack of a better way of putting it. Part eight, no one talks about. And part nine, such a deviation from what had come before it, but had some wonderful ideas. Not great in execution, but a wonderful character in Great Duke. Uh, a fantastic subversion in the opening scene, which is a slap in the face to those who say, oh, it doesn't have any intelligence in these films. And the ending, because this was the first one, Friday the 13th Part 9, was the first one under New Line Cinema, who also own Freddy Krueger. And that is what set the seeds in motion for Freddy vs. Jason. Took them a long time to get to it, but I thought it was worth the wait. And that does it for the Honourable Mentions. And that does it for this episode of the H-Bomb and J-Rock Unboxing Show. Thank you very much for taking this walk down memory lane with me. Now, you may have noticed, if you're a regular viewer of the show, that I discuss my Harley Quinn figures quite a bit. And you may have been then surprised that not one of them featured in that countdown. The reason for that is, next week, J-Rock will not be with us again, as he's off to the Green Gathering Festival with uh, his friend and her mum. So they'll be, he'll be gone all weekend, so we'll be doing another show, just me and Mr J. So I figured that that would be a good show to discuss the Harley Quinns in the collection. So similar to this episode, we will have a look at the various Harley Quinns that make up the collection, uh, including some pictures, figures, um, various models, various sizes, various uh, manufacturers, and that could be interesting if you like Harley Quinn. If you don't like Harley Quinn, then hopefully this will change your mind. So, thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for listening to me babble on about figures, what they mean to me, what they, and movies and various other things. Now, if you like your video games, you probably noticed that this is Link, Dark Link, uh, from The Legend of Zelda. And this is a design from a wonderful online store called Little Boutique and there'll be a link in the description there if you fancy going to check it out. They have wonderful items for sale and if you like the alternative culture then I'm sure you'll find something for you. Anyway, enough of the shilling. Thank you very much for watching. See you again next week. This is H-Bomb signing off.